The wheel turns once again, but where is it taking us? And is a destination worth it? Metalheads, welcome to Graphic Metal, where metal is celebrated with design in mind. Wearing one of Graphic Metal's new design shirts. Up the irons, baby. Iron Maiden related episodes coming next week. And tomorrow, an extra special episode where we're unveiling, releasing a new type of episode series. It's a series I used to do many years ago. I've been anxious to want to bring it back. Basically, it's a reimagination series. So from a from a design, graphic metal style uh, fashion, we're reimagining album covers, designs, you know, whatever I think is interesting. In this case, we're reimagining Metallica's 72 seasons. Starting off with a bang. <laughs> a year later, also revisiting how the album holds up and again, giving our recommendation of what it should have been. So check back on that again tomorrow. As for today, we are reviewing the latest album by Wheel, Charismatic Leaders. Charismatic Leaders by Wheel a progressive metal album released on May 3rd. Wheel immediately drew attention from the likes of me and those who heard them on their debut back in 2019, moving backwards because of its close proximity to the band Tool. Even opting to name themselves in close proximity. Side note, I'm shocked that they are that they're still using it. I say that because these days it's really rare to find that iconic, simple, straightforward kind of brand name and not run into legal problems. So that's cool. But <laughs> fortunate for them, uh, as obviously this this helps their their brand uh, instantly for sure. And I love how they have been using it to their advantage. Each of their now three albums clearly has them in a thematic focus, themology, abstract meaning, and hypothetical nature of like movement, most commonly in association to its relationship to, well, human beings and our relationship to nature and the universe. Opting to ride the coattails of another successful band can be very smart. It can boost your odds of success instantly. But just as the millions of other bands who have found it to be incredibly difficult, once you get labeled or associated that that closely to another successful band, it can it can cause major problems, right? I mean, look at Greta Van Fleet, for example. Even as open-minded as I am, I will admit I have, I can't stand this band. I hate them. And a big part of it is because of them immediately being labeled as the next Led Zeppelin. Oh, man. I mean, I, I instantly, I've been spent my, the rest of my time, you know, talking about how much they are 1,000% not. Uh, it, 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 they're, not even, they're not even really a great band to begin with. So it just, but on the other hand, Trivium was able to get out of the grasp of their associated label band Metallica. Okay, tangent over back to Wheel. Wheel formed in 2015, coming via Helsinki, Finland. I mentioned that this is now their third album. It includes James Lescalas on vocals and guitar, Jussi uh, uh, Turin on lead guitars, and, and Santeri Sakala on drums. How is it? Should anyone bother? In Wheel's case, it seems like they are dead set on continuing where Tool left off because all three albums now have been structurally very similar and that exact kind of style. 
longer build up tracks you know classic prog you know songs of from from the from the 90s with you know lighter moments that build up into you know riffing climaxes right and and also a few faster you know riff oriented shorter songs more, well one right more <laughs> on this on this album The good news is, is that, you know, they took to heart what Tool is so good at. And, you know, I remark on this album all the time, you know, the importance of strong balance and flow. They have this down in spades. I do, however, wish that they took inspiration from Tool from a design perspective. As unlike Tool, which is phenomenal at that, Wheel has not delivered on that in any capacity. At least, not design-wise. Lyrical, theme, and even title they also have down in spades. Charismatic Leaders is also a fantastic album title, and again, fits their brand theme really well. But what the fuck is with their album cover? This is one of the worst of the year. Although this today, not a good day for design. The other uh, other albums I'm reviewing also have shitty album covers. So what the fuck, man? Ugh. All right, let's see what graphic metal would do. First of all, given you are a prog rock band, you can take advantage of this and be a little bit more abstract and different. But at the same time, don't overthink it. Let's keep it simple. Let's focus first on the band logo. Hmm, interesting. Shapes with the letter E. You know what this kind of looks like is a, like a chat bubble, which since there are multiple of them could abstractly represent or ref reference conversations. Let's blow this up and crop it into the frame. Oh yeah, now we're talking. And what's cool is the bonus layer for diehard fans who could catch the reference that, you know, it's actually part of the band's logo. But wait, how could we make this even stronger and more effective to the meaning charismatic leaders? Got it. Just pop the, the shapes with different bold colors. Voila, charismatic leaders. It instantly grabs your attention, abstractly represents your album theme, but in an interesting way. And it even feels like prog rock. Done. Not that difficult, Wheel. Shame on you. After all, you are a prog rock band who is clearly inspired by Tool, and you forgot arguably the most important aspect of them? Design rant over, deep breath. Back to the music. As mentioned, this is straight up Tool from, well, Tool's Toolbox. <laughs> from a vocal perspective, James is more than capable of a modern uh, you know, prog singer, so no one should have any problems with him. Though worth noting that he and, and this band you know, do not follow the post-hardcore path of the likes of Between the Barry and Mead, or a viewer just recently mentioned yesterday, The Ocean, so them too. Is there, there is no screaming at all. This band focuses more on traditional lineage of prog rock, which again is something I personally love. The foundation of guitar, bass, drumming, again, it, it, it rhythmically takes Tool's approach. On this album, Similar to moving back, moving backwards, our first album, they really, really take this to heart. It sounds even more like Tool. My gut tells me that 50% of you will brush it off 
because of it just being, oh, it's like Tool, but it's not as good as Tool, so I'm done. Or the other 50% of you is going to be like, hell yeah, more Tool, please, more Tool. <laughs> the, the, the other, I, I know I'm spending a lot of time on Tool, but when you listen to the album, if you do, you will understand why. And just like them, they don't, you know, they don't always get the nose right, but I think the album was a major step up from, from their previous album, which I didn't like as much. First two listens all the way through, and I would say it's pretty on par with their debut. Song Callouts, obviously their first single, Empire, starts this album off in a great way. A great way. It's an amazing song. Unfortunately, a little bit of a tease because... It's the only, you know, shorter, fast-paced song on the entire disc. The two longest tracks are the other highlight, which is not a shocker, as this 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 is the band's strength, right? Again, just like Tool. Submission and the closer, uh, clo- the closer, the freeze, which at the six-minute mark in particular has one of the best riff in solo sequences of the year so far. The solo at 619. One of the a solo year a solo of the year candidate. I mean it's Jimmy Page would be freaking proud of this one. The song in general, I think, is the best on the album. I definitely, definitely recommend this band for fans of Hacken, Leprous, Stephen Wilson, along with Porcupine Tree, obviously, Caligus uh, Horse, which released their album just uh, a few months ago, and, of course, Tool. Santeri also, real quick, from a drumming perspective, shout out, because... It's not easy to pull this off, and I think he does a fantastic, marvelous job on this. Graphic Metal gives this album a score of 77. It's solid. I have to dock them for their shitty album cover design. I have to. Nonetheless, pretty solid. I definitely still recommend it. It's worth a listen to. And tomorrow, Tomorrow I got an extra special surprise. I'm introducing a new episode series. It's a series I used to do many years ago. I'm bringing it back. I've been so anxious to want to. I'm kicking it off with the Behemoth of Maul, Metallica, reimagining. So basically this album episode series is all about graphic metal reimagining an album, a design, a logo, a band, whatever. In this case, we are reimagining 72 Seasons by Metallica, which was a year ago. See also how what what I think a year year later how how it holds up and and again, how how it what it could have been like. Uh check back to that and then also Iron Maiden episodes uh Iron Maiden members and asking the question, who invented groove metal? next week. Until then, cheers and keep rocking.